Hi everyone, Richard Nijelski here for FitLink. In this video, I'll be demonstrating and explaining how to measure and record skin folds using the Isaac method. Skin folds are an easy and accurate way to assess a client's body composition. Generally, three to eight of the sites are recorded and measured, and these results can then be used to track a client's progress. So, grab your tape measure, grab your pen, and grab your skin fold calipers, and let's get going. Recording and tracking the sum of the skin folds is good practice, particularly when working with the same client over an extended period of time. This will help when assessing the progress of the client and provides a visual record for the client to view. For skin fold measurements to be accurate, it's important to follow the guidelines for the particular skin folds protocol you are using, and where possible, have the same person perform the follow-up skin fold measurements to minimize any variation between assessors. When assessing a client's skin folds, it is the right side of the body that is usually measured. Locate and mark all the landmarks first, then proceed to take the skin folds. The assessor pinches the skin at the appropriate site to raise a double layer of skin and the underlying adipose tissue, but not the muscle. Holding the pinch, the calipers are then applied one centimeter away and below the pinch at right angles. A reading is taken two seconds after the calipers are located. Two measurements should be taken and the mean of the two recorded as the result. If the two measurements differ greatly, a third should then be done, then the median value taken. When performing a skin fold assessment with a client, it is best to speak to the client beforehand to explain the assessment procedure, what the client can expect, how the measurements are taken, and what the results can help to assess. Assessing body fat using skin fold calipers can be a sensitive situation, particularly for very overweight individuals. The accuracy of the skin fold measurement in these situations typically decreases. It would be more appropriate to use other methods for assessing body fat, such as circumference measurements, scale weight, BMI, and how the client's clothes are fitting since the last assessment. For male clients, shorts should be worn. For female clients, shorts and a sports singlet with a regular bra underneath is best. To find the biceps and triceps location, first locate the acromial process. This is the point on the superior part of the acromion border in line with the most lateral aspect. Then locate the radial. This is the point at the proximal and lateral border of the head of the radius. Measure the linear distance between the acromial and the radial, avoiding the curvature of the arm. Place a horizontal mark at the level of the midpoint between these two landmarks. Project this mark around the most posterior and anterior surfaces of the arm as a horizontal line. Mark the midline with the vertical line. The skin folds for both the triceps and the biceps sites are taken along the long axis of the humerus. When locating the subscapular skin fold site, locate the undermost tip of the inferior angle of the scapula. If there is difficulty locating the inferior angle of the scapula, ask the client to slowly reach behind the back with the right arm. Use a tape measure to locate a point two centimeters from the subscapula in a line 45 degrees laterally downward. The pinch for the subscapular skin fold measurement is taken at approximately a 45 degree angle along the natural fold of the skin. The iliac crest site is located immediately above the most lateral aspect of the iliac crest. The client assumes a relaxed standing position with the left arm hanging by the side. The right arm should be either abducted or placed across the trunk. To locate the iliac skin fold site, palpate the iliac crest and mark. Align the fingers of the left hand on the iliac crest and exert pressure so that the two fingers roll over and above the iliac crest. The iliac crest skin fold site is generally located the width of the fingers above the iliac crest. Mark this location. The skin fold runs slightly downwards anteriorly as determined by the natural fold of the skin. When locating the supraspinale site, firstly, locate and mark the iliac crest. Then locate the most inferior or undermost part of the tip of the anterior superior iliac spine and mark. The skin fold site is located at the intersection of the line from the spinale to the axilla, the anterior area of the armpit, and the horizontal line at the level of the iliac crest.
measure along the fold which runs slightly downwards and anteriorly as determined by the natural fold of the skin. The abdominal skin fold site is located 5 cm to the right hand side of the midpoint of the navel. Mark the point and measure with a vertical fold. The front thigh skin fold site is located at the midpoint of the distance between the inguinal fold and the anterior surface of the patella on the midline thigh. Have the client seated with the thigh parallel to the floor with the knee bent at a right angle. Measure the midpoint between the inguinal fold and the superior margin of the anterior surface of the patella. Avoid following the curvature of the surface of the skin. Place a small horizontal mark at the level of the midpoint between the two landmarks. Now draw a perpendicular line to intersect the horizontal line. This perpendicular line is located in the midline of the thigh. Because of the difficulties of this skin fold, three methods are recommended. Method 1 is the standard and preferred method. The skin fold is raised at the marked site and taken while the knee is bent. Method 2 is used if the fold is difficult to raise. The client is asked to assist by lifting the underside of the thigh with both hands to relieve the tension of the skin. Method 3 is for clients with particularly tight skin folds. The client sits with the leg extended, lifting the underside of the thigh with both hands to relieve the tension of the skin. The calf measurement is located at the most medial aspect of the calf, at the level of the maximal girth. The client assumes a relaxed standing position with the right foot on a chair or bench. The lower leg should be vertical and the thigh parallel to the floor. The location of the maximal girth is found by using the middle fingers to manipulate the position of the tape in a series of up or down measurements to determine the maximum girth. The maximal girth is marked with a small horizontal line on the medial aspect of the calf. The skin fold measurement position is marked with a vertical line and measured with a vertical pinch. The total of the sites may be added together and used for future reference when assessing the client or for calculating body fat percentages. Because of the errors involved, it is usually not appropriate to convert skin fold measures to percentage of body fat. It is best to use the sum of several sites to monitor and compare body fat measures. Here is a table of general guidelines for using total sum in millimetres of the seven main skin fold sites. In order to satisfy those who want to calculate a percentage body fat measure, here are two equations which use four sites. When body fat percentage has been calculated, the results may be compared to that of the average population or body type classifications. A consensus of opinion for exact percentage body fat value associated with optimal health risk has yet to be defined. However, a range of 10 to 20 percent and 20 to 32 percent for men and women respectively is considered satisfactory for health. The client's calculated results may be compared to that of the accepted guidelines for the average population. For the athlete, the general norms may not apply. Different sports have different requirements in terms of body composition. For contact sports such as football or rugby, a higher body weight may be a useful advantage, while sports such as gymnastics, marathon running and other weight bearing activities rely on a high power to weight ratio and as such both low body fat and low body weight are necessary. No accepted percentage body fat standards exist for athletes. The ideal body composition is highly dependent on the particular sport or discipline and should be discussed on an individual basis with the coach, physiologist and nutritionist or dietitian. Body weight and body composition should be discussed in relation to functional capacity and exercise performance.